What's up, buddy? Not good, a lot. Good to see you. It's good to see you as well, my you man. You know, I was looking at a picture of you on Instagram. You've gotten extremely jacked. No. Like, it looks like it. You had your shirt off. No, sir. Uh, I did not have it off. <laughs> it, but you could... <laughs> no shirt Kind off of. Me. You had a, like a little tank top type deal. You look no, jacked. I had, it, I had it unbuttoned. It was pretty hot down in Texas. Yeah. And I, and I was... Abs. Not only because I'm flexing and I'm singing. I assure you, I'm not. Mm. Uh, I feel like I've gotten much smaller since the last time I've seen. But I appreciate you. Well, to me, my Monday off like that. <laughs> yeah. I saw you and I was like, dang, Parker's looking looking fit. Uh, how uh, every time I look at you, you're playing a massive show, and they continue to get bigger and bigger. Are you feeling like the wave grow for you? Um, I don't know, man. It's it's been crazy, crazy blur all year. Hands down, craziest year of my life. Like every year before this, that I'm like, yo, I'm barely hanging on to this thing. This year, way more intense and and gr all good. Blessed, so lucky. Um, probably a good thing that it's a blur. I do that thing, and sometimes people take a picture inside their house, and I'll like zoom into parts of their house and You're go weird like me. Yeah. So and I, and I I rarely admit this, but I'm like, okay, let me see. But I do it at your shows too because they're so big, and I like zoom to see if there are people if the top row. Is the, sold yeah, out. if it's sold out and how big the venue is. You're playing some really big spaces right now. Like sometimes I do that on stage. You do what? I'm looking up there. I'm like, is this all up there, dude? Do you watch ticket sales? No. Never. Mm -hmm. Do you ask before you go on stage? Sometimes. Do you ever get news you don't like? Yes. And then how do you react to it? Uh, go out there and swing even harder. Do you ever go, oh, man, I can't. I guess people don't like me in this part of the country. Um, no. Because I do that. In, okay, well, good. Because I do that in every part of the country. <laughs> I'm that, like, is, oh. that, is that a good thing? Yeah, um, that is a good thing. No, I, I mean, I try not to. I really try not to think about it. Um, sometimes you, I, I've been there, like big shows or whatever that, or maybe a show you were like, oh, I know we'll sell it out, and you don't. Um, sometimes I'll like, you know, I'll be asking around before. I'll, I'll ask, like, I'll call Henry, my agent. I'll be like, hey, we still need tickets tonight because it's been. Most nights you don't have to ask. So, and that's why I ask you because it's you've been killing it so often. If you're neurotic like me, anytime I put any ticket on sale, I'm looking at the little blue dots. But I'm doing theaters though, and I, you, they sell individual seats there, and I'm like, I guess people don't want to sit that close to me. So I, I really freak out about it. But good they, for you. They sit down for when they when they have seats. A lot of times they'll sit down. That's like the thing I worry about. And I'm like, what if they sit down all night and they'll stand. Oh, up you worry about them sitting. Mm -hmm. See, I, I don't want on their feet. I don't want anybody standing up. But I'm also doing jokes. Mm -hmm. So if they're standing up, they're probably leaving. <laughs> I don't know, man. I I, uh, I probably look, I probably worry about it and look at it more than I admit, but really not that much. I don't think. Do you ever look at anybody in the audience and if they're like looking at their phone or not paying attention to you and go, man, I got to turn this thing up a little bit? No, but you'll see. Pe I'll see people yawn. Oh no! And I have oh, a funny. <laughs> I have a funny story about that, and I, and I think about it every time someone yawns. But I sat front row at a John Mayer concert one time in San Antonio. I mean, like front row dead center in front of his microphone and it was in i yawned during why georgia and uh um after the song he was he didn't look at me and say it but he was like oh we already got people yawning and they played something a little more up tempo but i always see people yawn but you have to think about yourself at that point you probably weren't bored maybe no, you just didn't get enough sleep all. the night before i was just tired yeah and so mm -hmm. so now you have to just think that's you watching john mayer yeah when people go to the bathroom in the middle of a song does mm -hmm. that bother you? Um, no, but I, I know which songs they're going to the bathroom on. Like That's pretty funny. hard, they're back in their seat by the time we play that, or I can't breathe a hell of a year. But there's a couple songs I notice. Like if we do a cover, which is very rare, we didn't we rarely rarely do covers, but people go get some popcorn. What's your go to cover? Um, for a little while it was True by George Strait earlier this year. Uh, we were doing uh, Dwight Yoakam's version of Suspicious Minds for a while, but. That's a really cool word. I was getting messages after the shows from kids that were like, hey, your new song is awesome. <laughs> and I'm just like, and that's like the one part of the show where just nobody, no, nobody, none of these kids know that song. And they're just like, we, we don't want to hear that. Yeah. Parker McCollum is here with us. And I haven't seen you in person since like the laptop incident happened because I, I believe. Oh, when it got stolen. Yeah. That was bad. And I've, I've, I've saved this the entire time. Because I wanted to talk to you about it on the air. So, your laptop was stolen from where? Uh, Hallie, it was actually Hallie Ray's computer. She was flying out of somewhere and was taken. It was stolen in the when you come out the other side of the, the bin. Yes, out of the bin. Secu Wait, what? Yes. When you just put it through for like six mm -hmm. seconds, mm -hmm. and somebody took it and and went home somewhere. Hold on, let me get this straight. You put so you take your shoes I off. I think that's what happened. You, you take your laptop. Happened? 
I don't know. Or maybe that's crazy if someone is that bold. To I went there. there. I was not with Hallie Ray when it happened. I was about to walk on stage somewhere, and I just put on Twitter. I'm like, yo, this is where his computer says. If anybody knows anybody here, like. Because you that. did the track, My Computer. Grab Which is the, crazy that it would be on because that means the computer has to be on. And so it tracked. It showed up at somebody's house. And I came off stage. And I guess it was some big mis. They said it was a misunderstanding. I don't know. I was not there, but these people got very upset that like hundreds of people started showing up to their house on a Friday night asking for this laptop. Oh my god! Yeah, so was, I really should not have done that. Was you bad. posted where it was. Uh, I did. Yeah, yeah, I just put exactly. it on Twitter real quick. I was like, <laughs> I was like, hey, just somebody run grab this like from their house. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. And, and, and then I, I was on stage for an hour and a half, and I come off, and I think uh, my tour manager at the time had like gone on stage and or gone on the bus and got my phone and deleted the tweet and all that they were really coming to the ears like what's your phone password i can remember that and they deleted it he says it over the mic yeah. <laughs> three two six it was it was it was sorry to those people I that's think, crazy well, it unless, was an accident unless they stole it yeah i think it was stolen yeah, i would think so too oh. yeah so not sorry yeah but i would but still i mean i'm sure they would have Probably could have just contacted him. I didn't have to put their address on the internet. Nah, no, no, it's a great story. I've been saving it. I bet they'll never do that again. I saw a picture of, maybe it was in Nashville, somebody threw a bra up on stage, and, mm -hmm. you know, that was a big thing in the 80s and 90s. People throw their underwear up on stage. But I, women like you. Women love you. Dudes love you. But how does some your wife... Them. Yeah, how does your wife... Some that don't. How does your wife react when people, women are throwing their underwear on stage? Um... You know, I don't... Uh, she's, she's pretty good about it, man. She's... Uh, I can understand why maybe... I mean, if she was up there and a bunch of men were throwing their boxers at her, I'd probably be like, not 100%, but she's, I think she's 99% okay with it. Do you have to go, you can't save them, right? I guess it's my, you, I don't. you can't put leave in your house like in a box <laughs> of all the yeah, underwear we, that's thrown. We did no. have a, a guy that worked at a venue one night ask, he said they're expensive and his daughter wears them. What? No. So if they're the right oh, yeah, size. Yeah, that's a true story. His daughter? Yes, and he, that is a true story. Oh. Do you think that people that throw, <laughs> This is just us imagining. People that do that, do you think they bring extra or they take theirs off? I've wondered that. I've wondered that. Because sometimes, like, man, they'll throw them and they're – I mean, it's like a, it's like a, a gag gift almost. Like, the bra is so big. I'm like, somebody – some some guy trying to be funny probably. Unless it's not a gag gift. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I, I don't know. That's not – I'm not, yeah. not my field of expertise. I don't have many of them. Well, what's the first song you play in your set? Uh, uh, wait outside. Why that one? Uh, I don't write a ton of up tempo stuff. I write a lot of sad, slow country songs and um, try to come out swinging hard. Do any of your folks go, hey, write some more up tempo stuff? All or, the time. They do. Mm -hmm. Is that a constant struggle? Do you, do For you, me, yes. Do you have to walk in a room and go, okay, we're going to, even though this idea is super sad, we got to give it up, up tempo feel? Um, I try to. I try to, I think probably too much. I put too much emphasis on it lately. Um, I just get bored singing sad, slow songs all the time. Um, I and mean, they're my favorite songs in the world. I love sad, slow country, love songs about everything going terribly wrong. I've written a ton of them. Um, but I kind of like crave, I'm like, man, I want to do something that's maybe a little more up tempo or try to write something that's more up tempo today. Or, um, But I don't know, man. It seems like all my best songs are slow. What's, creatively for you right now like what what keeps you going what's in, like what are you super interested in or are you just too tired and you're only focused on the road to sit down and actually be creative throughout the summer super tired didn't want to write uh was trying really hard to write was like really carving out time for myself on the road to sit down and play guitar and write songs and just just bleh, not good um and then once the seasons change and like now that like here in nashville you know the trees are all yellow like they've changed a little bit and the air is a little cooler and crisper and i'm like the creative juices it just i had a song i wrote when i was a freshman in high school called permanent headphones there's a line and it says a change of season is a change of my soul and that's like the truest thing in the world for my songwriting like when it's even from springtime to summer like just that that change kind of gets it going a little bit but very tired and yeah, I'm pretty tired of songwriting, too. What do you think is the best song you've ever written? Uh, I don't know. I don't think any of them really deserve too too much praise. Um, <laughs> haven't done anything. What song are you most proud of? Come uh, probably Rest of My Life. Why? Uh, I don't know. I just, uh, you know, you hear about songwriters write 
you know, great songs, or you hear these stories about these great songs that were written, and you're like, oh, man, I wrote it. Like, David Lee Murphy wrote Dust on the Bottle in, like, 20 minutes at his kitchen table or something. And uh, uh, and so, and so I wrote that song in, like, man, 15 minutes at 9 o'clock in the morning, dead sober on, like, a Tuesday. Just that was a little, you just wait on those moments as a songwriter. They're yeah. hard to come by. Have you heard a song in the past few years, and you go, dang, I wish I would have written that? Not as you were close to actually writing that song, but it was so good. It was written so well that you go, "Holy crap! I wish yeah. that. It, I wish I could have like created that." Like, what? What do you respect? What song? Trucker Speed by Fred Eaglesmith. I wish I would have written that song. It make it make a grown man cry. Um, um, you know, I listened to this song like se- probably 70, 80 times this weekend and last week. Uh, Pretty Little Adriana by Vince Gill. I've probably listened to that song 80 times in the last five or six days. What about it makes you respect it so much? It's extremely simple. The, the, the verses are just like, I miss your smile, I miss your touch. It's nothing over the top poetic lyrically, um, but it's the, the melody is, the chorus melody is just, and I think you can't sing Vince Gill songs, really. Yeah, it's hardly the, anybody. Hardly can. anybody can, um, right? And, uh, I don't know. I'm on my bus like before the show, just straining my voice trying to hit that chorus. And it's just phenomenal, man. You ever blown your voice out getting ready before a show? Uh, like, I think I've over overdone it on the warm up before, probably multiple times this summer. Um, the more tired it gets, the longer I'll warm up and try to like really, you know, kind of just think about it like a muscle, you know, like if you're stretching or warming up, kind of the same thing. You work out on the road? You try to? Uh, I did. I went to a gym every day for. Since I started touring, my merch guy Lane and I would wake up, find a gym in town, go pay a day pass, and or buy a day pass and work out. And then, oh, I don't know, twelve months ago, I started playing golf every <laughs> single day. You do every over over. We did the rough math over fifteen hundred holes in the last twelve months. Are you better? It is better. Yeah. Are you playing in town at all? Um, you know, I never play when I'm in town. I'm usually only home on Monday and Tuesday, and um, I play every single day on the road, and Hallie Ray's usually likes to spend time with me, which I understand. I want to spend time with her, too. Um, All I know is that when I've texted you to play golf, you always say no at home. Now I know that that's why. Cause you And I always, I mean, I'm always, you know, even the Mondays and Tuesdays that I am home, it's always, I mean, I'm doing, you know, even stuff like this all the time. So Are you telling me, and maybe interpreting this wrong, they that you'd, ra- are. you'd rather spend time <laughs> with her than me? That's what women do, right there. Is that what you- <laughs> That's what women do, right there. Uh, you say something, she's like, "So you're saying this?" I'm like, "I'm not saying that." Let's talk about the new song for a second. So, "Handle on You," I, you and Monty Criswell wrote it. Mm-hmm. Like, talk to me about. I'm always interested in how an idea comes and makes it all the way to radio single, even. So you're in a room, and "Handle on You" comes from what was it? A lyric and some a line somebody had written, or just an idea for a song? Um, you know, Monty came over. I was living, I had a place, uh, downtown, uh, really just a couple blocks from here, um, uh, for like two years and I was moving out of it. Um, I bought this house here and, uh, Monty came over and all my stuff was in boxes and Hallie and I was actually, this was a while ago. We had broken up at the time and, uh, he came over and had this title. He said, man, I got this song we should write. It's called finally got a handle on you. And I was like, well, I like that a lot. And sat around for about that one was written actually really quickly too um probably i don't know in an hour hour and a half we're gonna play it now this is handle on you parker mccollum we'll be back in just one second do you ever write a song parker that sucks oh yeah like you finish you say every all day, the time. but I'm talking like you you write the song, you finish it mm-hmm. you record the demo even and you feel pretty good but then you go back and listen maybe i don't know what your process is a day a week later and you go Oh, what were we thinking? Man, I, I'm so – it's such – I was just talking to my dad this morning on the on the way here about this. Um, but I, I, it's like a huge complex with myself. I, even the songs that I had – that I wrote this weekend. I wrote four songs this weekend out on the road. And while we were writing them, I was like, man, I just was so into them, was, was really, really feeling creative and, and loved what we were doing. And then um, listened to them all yesterday evening, and I'm like, those aren't very good. What what makes them not very good? I think I just get really tired of them, I really really quickly. Even when we cut, you know, we'll go for this new album. I've been cutting. We've been in the studio, and you know, you're listening to these mixes, and 
send them back and forth over and over and over again, and I just get so burnt out on the song so quick. Is that how you know when a song that you've written or recorded is really good that you don't burn out on it so quick? Mm -hmm. That's not how you know? No, I get so, it doesn't even, I think the best songs on this record I got so tired of so quick, and I'm like, I just want to do something different already, and the record's not even done. It's like a crazy battle I have with myself daily. Then who, who talks you through the battle then? Me. So you have to ha give yourself advice. I like that. I do that too. Mm -hmm. I give myself a lot of advice, and usually it's bad. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know if I give myself advice. I just, I just kind of, um, I don't know, shut it off and put it away and don't pay attention to it. Instead of like listening to the songs and you know, like compromising myself and being like, "Hey, you're thinking wrong about this." I'll just be like, "Nah," and won't pay attention to it. Do you then go back to it and check, or it's just like, "I know it's good. I'm done." Mm -hmm. And, and I don't even know it's good. I'm just like, it's good enough for the record, I think. So, it's a, cra it's a crazy yeah, yeah, battle you're, you're, I have. You're walking myself. me down Neurotic Highway here. All the time, man. It's it's always on my mind 24-7. Um, and it's a weird thing to do for a living. You're betting everything you've worked for, everything you've built, you know, for, I don't know. Was somebody calling Parker? Somebody famous? Ooh. No, it's yes. probably my dad. I Let's told see, him I was going to be on. Was it your dad? I told him I was going to be on here. He probably Answer. Thinks, he probably thinks I'm on right now. Put him on um, speaker. Let's talk to him. You want to talk to if him? He's saying, if that's really him, put him on speaker. I've got a couple him. words for him. No, it's <laughs> Gus It's Gus West, good cowboy out of West Texas. Um, Gus West, the good, is that his nickname, the good cowboy? Yes. Yeah, put Gus on. He'll have no idea who I am, but put him on. Let's call him back real quick. Yeah. Let me call him. You want to call yeah, him? Yeah, does he have FaceTime? Yeah, let's yeah, hit him on FaceTime. <laughs> He's gonna trip. <laughs> <laughs> There's a cowboy son of a gun right here, dude. All right. He's probably working in jail right now. All right, let's see what Gus is up to. He sells cow medicine. Really? Yes. Exclusive interview with Gus. <laughs> Please answer, Gus. Here he is. <laughs> Gus. What's up, cowboy? What up? What up, big dog? What's going on? Hey, uh, I'm Bobby Bones. How you doing? You know, I'm over here with Parker, just so you know, shooting the, you know, you know, we're shooting. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so you, you, uh, you, you, you do, uh, animal medicine. Is that what it is? Yes, sir. What, what yes, do you, sir. what do you mean? Like, tell me about your day. What's your, what's your job? Uh, so just, I don't know. Uh, it's pretty much like, a, uh, ranchers just call me, tell me what they need or ask questions about what they might or what they're seeing or. Something like that, and then I just kind of fill them in from there. You ever put your hand all the way up a cow's butt? <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> what about a horse? What animals? But how many animal butts you put your hand in? Not many butts. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, no way. Whenever uh, you called, we asked Parker, who was because we're in the middle of an interview here, and he goes, "It's Gus. Gus, a good cowboy from uh, East Texas, West Texas, West Texas, from West Texas." And I was like, well, let's talk to Gus. So you just should know that behind your back, Parker yeah, thinks you're a good dude. <laughs> oh, he's, I love him. He's the best. Yeah. You ever go to a Parker show? <laughs> Every now and then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty good, huh? Pretty good. Pretty good singer. Yeah, it's all right. All right, buddy. <laughs> what? Uh, we've been on the radio. Is that okay? Oh, yeah. All right. You're not running for the law or anything, right? No. All right, buddy. Right all right. All right. Gus has got sunglasses on and a cowboy hat, so I didn't know. Oh, I don't know where he's running from right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gus. I'll I'll, uh, I'll tell Parker to call you back. I'll talk to you soon. Sweet. Sounds good, y'all. Have a good day. All right, buddy. See ya. I like old Gus. He is going to tell every single person. How'd you meet Gus? Where, where where'd that come from? Um, Gus was booking. It's called the uh, Coleman Rodeo, um, or the Stanford Rodeo. Um, it's the oldest rodeo in in uh, Texas, and uh, he was booking it when I was like in a. I think the first time I played it, I was in my pickup truck. Next year, I was in a van. Next year, I was in a bigger van and played it. The next year, I'm we were in a tour bus and known him a long time. And um, he actually introduced me to my wife, Hallie Ray Light. That's the that should be the lead of that story. Wow, yeah. And then yes. the rest comes out. So when he introduces you to her, how does he introduce you? Uh, he actually, well, I guess he'd introduce us. He told me I was playing that rodeo one year and we had stayed up all night drinking beer after. And he had gone to Oklahoma State for like a semester. And, uh, <laughs> And he said, man, there's this girl, Hallie Ray Light, you got to meet. He said, I think you'd like her a lot. And um, and so I didn't even, you know, think much about that. I just liked the name, Hallie Ray Light. thought that was a good name for a song. So I started trying to write a song about it. And uh, <clears throat> and I did, and word got back to her, and 
you know, I guess she come she were she came out to uh, we played in Stillwater, uh, where Oklahoma State is, and she came out and saw us at the Tumbleweed play a little bar there one night. Um, was it instant? No, no, that was uh, the first first night I was ever on a tour, tour bus permanently. Uh, was that night, and um, you know, she came to the show and came up on the bus, and I I think I was a little probably thought I was you know living a little bit larger than I really was, and. Uh, I don't think she liked me very much. <laughs> she was on a tour bus for about <laughs> three and a half minutes. Uh, she said my behavior was not acceptable, and so she left. She said that with her work, like out loud? She got, it was like nine months. I was I hollered at her for like nine months. Did she, she keep finally, saying no, or did she just not, not answer? Uh, she was she was kind of toying with it, you know. I think <clears throat> she would she would give me a little bit of attention here and there, but most of the time she would act like she she was not interested. Mm -hmm. It worked, huh? I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It took me nine months. I would do want to end with this because, you know, when someone has such success, I always like to ask them how they react when adversity hits, which is what you've done. You're very humble and, you know, how you were talking about looking at tickets and stuff. But I do want to know, like, what's going right for you right now? Give me the four things in your life that's going right for you right now. Uh, her and I are as good as we've ever been. That helps a lot, uh, as it probably everybody knows. Um, that would be one. Number two, um, I mean, I think a career is going good. It could be going better. I think we have a long, long way to go. Um, Where to, what do you mean way to go? You're killing it. Yeah, but I mean, I mean it's a lot of people have had a couple number ones and, um, uh, you know, sold out some shows to really do it and have a career of, you know, like an impressive career in country music is really the ultimate goal uh, and to do it for a long time. Um, but it's going well. That would be number two. Um, number three. Uh, Wait, whatever you about to say, smiling about. <laughs> what, what are you about to say? Well, I, don't know. I was just saying my family's healthy. So good. That's, that's really good. Yeah. Um, you know, my mom and dad are around that 60 mark, and they're doing really good. Um, and, uh, oh, I don't know. You got to find one more. Dig deep. There's there's quite, there's quite a lot going good, man. Gus? Um, it's Gus good. is doing. Gus is awesome. Gus is yeah. Gus is still healthy, Gus, driving you know, apparently. Gus is going to tell that story to every person in West Texas by 5 p.m. today. Well, the good thing is he'll also have an audio clip of it because he was on the air he'll and he can, he can then play it. How he's he came gonna, on and just killed he it. He's going to love that. <laughs> yeah, and Gus just said you got the highest ratings ever. Say you got higher ratings than Parker did during the interview, although that's not even a thing you can measure. Gus that would West be cool. on the Bobby Bones show. Mm. Uh, Gus, the good cowboy, made his appearance today. <laughs> well, Parker, you know I'm rooting for you, man. Thank you. You don't need my rooting because you're killing it. And, you know, just you talk about, you know, things you want to get it better, but it's like you have the hardest thing to get is a live audience to show up passionately. Because, mm -hmm. again, you can put out a couple songs, have a couple number ones. You've done that, but I'm talking about you have built a passionate fan base. And those people don't go away. I think that's really great. I know you know that. I know you think that's awesome and you give your fans a lot. And, that's super important to you. But, man, it's just really cool to see you killing it. And, Thank you. Uh, the new song's great, and I guess we'll see you soon whenever you grace us with your presence again. Well, so you've been as nice to me as anybody has since the first time we ever met. So That's true. I remember that all the time. That's Thank true. You Thank you. You're welcome. That. You should remember that. When I need it, when I text you, I'm like, hey, man, I need a job. Let me come work for you. Said, me and Gus. I just want to go play golf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, there he is, Parker McCollum, everybody. Good to see yeah. you, Parker. Thank you.